Robber flies are among some of the most impressively large predators of the insect world, with a generally bulky build and a venomous bite. But deep in white sand scrub habitats throughout central Florida lives an unusual species of robber fly, so small they are almost impossible to spot without careful searching. Today, we are out in some scrub habitat along the Lake Wales Ridge in central Florida with one challenging goal in mind, find the pygmy scrub robber fly. All right, well, this is far from the smallest robber fly in the world. In fact, this is one of the biggest ones I've ever caught. This right here is a lifer for me, Proctocanthus gracilis, which unfortunately does not have a common name, but it's a really large species of robber fly that you could find out in these scrub habitats in central Florida. This species does not range south to where I normally look for robber flies in South Florida, but it is great to see one out here in their range in Central Florida. This species is very similar to a lot of other species that I do find in South Florida, but Proctocanthus gracilis has these really beautiful yellow markings on the thorax that set it apart from basically any other Proctocanthus species. It also has relatively short, clear wings, which makes it a pretty distinctive species in a group of robber flies that's usually really hard to identify. So I'm gonna release this absolutely massive robber fly and let's keep looking for some even weirder robber fly species out here in the Central Florida scrub habitat. Usually how I would look for robber flies is by just walking in these sandy trails like this, upright, and just looking and actually listening for their movement on the ground because most robber fly species are actually large enough for me to be able to see their movements from where I'm standing upright like this. However, the species we are out here looking for is actually abnormally small for robber fly to the point where you can't even see them from standing like this. To find such a small insect, we need to take our searches closer to the ground crouching down and slowly shuffling through the pine needles and dead grasses on the ground and search for even the slightest of movements. In such an expansive habitat, finding one of these tiny insects is like finding a needle in a haystack. And it seemed like we were out of luck in our search for one of these pygmy robber flies, until... There we go. Yep, that's it. Yes. All right, children, you definitely will not be able to see this from right now. But right in front of me right here is what is most likely the world's smallest robber fly species. And it lives right here in central Florida. This is the pygmy scrub robber fly, or Townsendia arenicola, a species of robber fly that only grows around two to three millimeters in length. That is insanely tiny for a robber fly. This isn't just one of the smallest robber flies, by the way, here in Florida. It's one of the smallest flies in general that I've ever seen. As you saw earlier with that Proctocanthus gracilis, robber flies can be some of the largest flies that you can ever find. Most robber flies are these stocky, large predatory flies that in fact are so large that you can even hear their wings beating when they're flying around. But this tiny little Townsendia arenicola right here, while it is super small, not bulky at all, and is a completely silent flyer because of its tiny size, is still a predatory species of fly. However, unlike many of the larger sized robber flies, these things are not apex predators of the insect world. They are significantly slower flyers than most robber flies are, and are actually extremely cooperative and let me get super close, which is how I've gotten some of these very close up shots that you're seeing right now. This is very unusual for robber flies, which I've known to be some of the flightier insects that I like to try and catch and feature on this channel. But you can see besides the extremely abnormally small size, these share so many other characteristics with some of the more top predatory robber fly species. To start off, their body is very streamlined and they fold their wings on top of their back when they land. Second of all, their eyes, like basically every other robber fly, are huge and cover almost the entirety of the sides of their face, which gives these very good vision, even for their tiny little size. These guys will sit at the top of a little, usually a pine needle sticking out of the ground because they're that small, and they will just sit there very still and scan the environment for any insects that are smaller than them that are flying around. That's right, I said hunting for insects. These two to three millimeter tiny little flies are still predators just like every other robber fly. And also just like every other robber fly, have a proboscis that could deliver a toxic bite to their prey. However, even the largest robber flies have harmless venoms to human. So you can imagine that this tiny little robber fly 
that proboscis is so tiny, it's not even gonna be able to puncture your skin. In fact, this pygmy scrub upper fly right here is so immersed in trying to look for food that it is letting me get so close. I can get less than an inch away with my hand and it has not flown off once. And actually, I'm looking really close and even though it's still looking for other food items, it actually has a tiny little insect or a tiny little mite, I can't tell what it is, in its mouth. So it's eating a tiny little arthropod and is still looking for food because it's so tiny that they can only hunt some of the tiniest of things and they need to constantly be on the lookout for little tiny insects, little tiny mites, anything that is small enough to fit in their tiny little mouth. From above, these tiny flies look like it's a little speck of dust hovering around. But if you look close, you can actually see some of the distinctive color patterns of the pygmy scrub robber fly. First of all, the back of the head besides those big black eyes, as well as the thorax, are a pale gray color. That helps them blend in almost perfectly with the sand when they're out here hunting for little insects. Where the more interesting and distinctive pattern of this species comes in is on the abdomen. The color of their abdomen is pretty variable, but usually it's either black or black and red. Some individuals of this species can have some pretty bright red colorations on their abdomen. But that doesn't really make a difference. They're still the same species. Just some individuals have more colorful abdomens than others. Sometimes the legs are even like a bright orange or a golden color. This one right here, as beautiful as it is, is actually quite a plain colored individual. I've seen some pictures of some online of them getting pretty bright in coloration. But the legs on this one are more grayish and the abdomen is pretty much completely black. Even though I knew this was going to be two to three millimeters in length, just seeing it in the field is, it's even more tiny than I could have imagined it being. There's no way you're gonna see this flying around just walking upright. You have to crawl or squat on the ground and patiently look for their flights. Because as you can see, they don't fly very often to see where these things are. And that's exactly what we did. And that is exactly how we found this beautiful pygmy scrub robber fly. So I'm just gonna appreciate finally finding this species of robber fly that I have been looking for for so long. And I hope you enjoyed learning all about the beautiful pygmy scrub robber fly with me. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here, where we find a very large species of robber fly that mimics bees for a very strange reason. Enjoy!